Welcome to our celebration of the baptism of the Lord. <clears throat> if you are with us on Zoom, please remain muted during the service, except when we pray the Lord's Prayer and the exchange of peace. Just after being baptized, Jesus was at prayer, and the heavens opened, and a voice declared him as the beloved Son. If prayer was the first thing Jesus did after baptism, then the message to us is to embrace prayer as a necessary behavior as baptized daughters and sons of God. Through prayer, we can learn our deepest truth. Prayer opens heaven to us and real, reveals who we are and what God is calling us to be. Please stand and join in our gathering song. With one voice the angels sing Songs that make creation ring Prophets hear and call us to Live in spirit and in truth Word of God Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yes. Almighty God, we ask you to bless this water. May it remind us of our baptisms, but may it also remind us of the baptismal life that we are called to live, in which our worst self is always going down into the water to die, and our best self is always being raised to a newness of life by the grace of Christ. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, 
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been up to the river Jordan, only declare your love and son, and that your children, by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is explained. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the for the month for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, be, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out, and say to the uh, say to the cities of Judah. Here is your God.
Here comes the power of the Lord God, who rules by a strong arm. Here is the reward with him. His response is recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading, leading the heroes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Be a to a spirit too, and be a to a spirit too, and be a to a spirit too, say Rana Navara, the Fastel and Terra, say Rana Navara, the Fastel and Terra. Spirit of the living God, burn in our hearts and make us a people of hope and compassion. And be a to a spirit too. And be a to a spirit too. And be a to a spirit too. Say our end Wind of promise, wind of change, friend of the poor. Empower your people to make peace and justice. to a spirit too, and be a to a spirit too, say are in a vada, the foster and terra, say are in a vada, the foster and terra, let the life and holiness heal every beyond every sin that divides us, and be a to a spirit too, and be a to a spirit too, and be a to a spirit too, say our end of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared. Saving all and training us in reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live
and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age. As we, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great, great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the hath and rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. When he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming and I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. After all, the people had been baptized and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise Jesus. Jesus. We have to start with the positive. We have to start the spiritual life with the positive. And if we don't, we're not going to get very far in the spiritual life. If we start with fear and guilt and shame, we'll probably end up pretty much in the same place. We have to get to the positive, or we're not going to get very far in the growth of spiritual life. We have to start with the positive. And so in our gospel, we have Jesus at the start of his ministry. He's about to begin his ministry. And he starts with something profoundly positive. He starts with 
the voice of God saying, you are my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. And that is precisely the thing that all of us need to hear at some point in our lives. We must hear that. We must somehow hear, you are my beloved daughter and whom I am well pleased. You are my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. You are my beloved child of God and whom I am well pleased. We have to hear that and we have to start there if we're going to go very far in the spiritual life. And so that means we're going to have to give up. We're going to have to leave behind some of our earlier notions of God that we may have that are not big enough. They're not big enough and they're not positive enough. And we'll have to leave them behind. And one of those ideas about God that we can get sort of stuck with is the fact that God treats life like a game. It's the story that God treats life like a game. And so that would be like this. You know how that goes? That would be, well, you know, in living this life, you've got to roll the right number on the dice every time, and you've got to go right to the right place, and then you have to get the next and the next right place. And if you get it wrong, you have to go straight to jail and don't collect $300. And it's this view of life that, well, now you're in the love of God. Oh, and now you're out. Oh, you made the wrong step. Now you're out. Okay, now, oh, now you're back in. Oh, now you're out. We're in and out of the love of God because we haven't done everything exactly right at every step. That version of God, that version of God, we have to let go and we have to, we have to let that die because that is not positive enough for us to begin the spiritual life. And it's not true of God. It's not how Jesus treated life. He never treated life like a game. Another view of God that we can be, uh, that we can get in our minds and can keep us from growing and keep us stuck, stuck it's because it's too, it's too negative. It doesn't get to the positive image of God. Is God as the great accountant? And I'm sure we've all had this version of God at some point. And you know, that's the version of God in the accounts book. And, uh, and he's got a page for each of us. And each page has two columns, positive, you know, bad column, good column. And all God does all of our lives is just keep a really close eye on us. He spies on us and he checks off a little each column. Oh, see, there's three in a row. Oh, you know, three steps forward, five steps back. And all God has to do at the end of time is just add up the columns. Got more good than bad to go to heaven. Got more good than, more bad than good to go to hell. That version of God has to die from our imaginations because that is not positive enough for us to get anywhere in the spiritual life. And the reason it's not positive enough is as if all God is doing is just watching passively the evil of the world and not doing anything about it. What kind of a God is that? That's not a God I would pray to. And it's not a God I believe in. The God that we believe in is not only keeping track, is not only noticing what is right and wrong, but that our God is intimately involved in the hearts of every person to turn around what has, what has been done for evil, to transform evil into good. What God is doing in their hearts is transforming evil into good. Is God is in the hearts of all people working, working, and this is the St. Ignatius's vision of God. What was God? What, was, what did God look like for St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits? He was busy. God is busy, and he is busy in the hearts of all people, healing the effects of evil, taking what has been done for evil and turning it around through sacrificial love to bring good out of what was meant for evil. God is working as what we call redemption, which means transformation, changing evil into good. 
what God is doing, what God is busy doing in the hearts of all people is changing crucifixions into resurrections. It's transforming evil into good. Is reversing the effects of evil so that love comes out of the nothingness, the void of hatred and senselessness. What only God can do, create out of the nothingness of evil, create good. And so that view of God as a someone who's just passively standing back and checking off columns, that's not, that's not going to be a God that is positive enough that we can grow very far in the spiritual life with that. And so in our gospel, we are given another much more positive view of God, which is where we start from, which is God who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. John baptizes Jesus by pouring water over him, and God baptizes us by pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts. It's what St. Paul said in Romans 5.5, 5, that wonderful, wonderful scripture, Romans 5.5. 5. God is pouring the Holy Spirit and the love of God into our hearts. God is, right now, God is pouring the Holy Spirit and his love, the love of God, into all of the hearts, into all of our hearts. And that's a place to begin because now we've gotten to the positive. Because God, if God, God is pouring the Holy Spirit in, in which is a gift, which we didn't, we can't deserve, which we can't work for, which is not a result of good behavior. It's not a reward for good behavior. It is the gift of God pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts. And who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If God is pouring his Holy Spirit into our hearts, then we don't have a gift from God. We don't just have a gift from God. We have the gift of God. We have the gift of God it's divine life in our hearts. And so that means that when love comes alive in our hearts, God comes alive in our hearts because God is the love in our hearts. And we know we have false loves and we have true loves, but when we touch the real thing, when we get to real love, self-sacrificial love for the sake of doing what is good and better rather than for ourselves, that is God in our hearts. And so we get to the positive if we realize that we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, that God is flooding our hearts with his own divine life and love. And that means that we can start then the spiritual life in a very positive way. And that means that life is not a moral test. It means that life is an invitation to love along with the love of God. That's what life is about. It means that we can be open to the fact that God, means that we can be open to the fact that we could fall in love. We could fall in love with the transcendent. We could find within ourselves a desire to fall in love totally and completely without any small print, without any fine print. No exceptions. We could find in our hearts that pull and desire to fall in love that completely. And that means we would fall in love with God. To fall in love without any strings attached is to fall in love with the divine person. We've gotten to the positive. If we realize that we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and we could experience within ourselves, if we got to know ourselves as someone baptized in the Holy Spirit, we could experience falling in love with the divine. And we could also find there an invitation to be inspired by a love that isn't our own. We could be inspired by a love we don't own. If God has poured the Holy Spirit into our hearts, and the Holy Spirit is the love of God the Father and God the Son, and there's a love inside of everybody's heart they don't own. It's God's love, loving through our loves. 
and we could be inspired by a love that is not our own. And it means that there could be an event in our life that takes place where we get involved with something and make the decisions to do something, and we're not the source of where the inspiration came from. But the source came from the Holy Spirit, the love of God in our hearts. And we know that kind of love. We can kind of do a discernment about that kind of love when we're faced with a decision. And uh, uh, we're, this is a tough decision, but, uh, you know, it's something that needs to be done. And if we find ourselves fantasizing about who we're going to become, well, I'll really be somebody if I do that. Well, that's clearly not, that's the wrong love. Sorry, that's the wrong kind of love. But if we say this is something that would be truly good that needs to be done. I could do it and it will cost me to do it, but it is so good that it must be done and I will pay the price. And we feel the Holy Spirit holding our fears in check and inspiring us with a source that doesn't come from us. That's the Holy Spirit. We we have reached, we have touched something about God that is positive enough that we can then respond to the spirit and we can begin to grow in the spiritual life from the place of something positive, not negative. It's a way, if we can get to know ourselves increasingly, get to know ourselves as the person who has been baptized by the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, we can get to know ourselves as a person whose heart is having the Holy Spirit poured into it, which is to say the love of God poured into it, then we can also experience God saying to us in that way, you are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. And you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You are my beloved child of God in whom I am well pleased because you have within your heart the gift of my own divine life. When your love in your heart is God in your heart. So let us come to this. Let us come to this table and let's come positively. Let's come because we have reached a positive place where we realize we have been baptized in God's Holy Spirit. Let's come to this table and hear God say to us through it, through God's giving of his own life, his own divine life here. Let's hear God saying to us, you are my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. You are a child of God, in whom I am well pleased. Let us stand now and declare our faith in the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he was again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Through the sacrament of baptism, as children of God, we entrust our needs and those of our world to our heavenly father, who is most father and most mother to us all. Our response is, oh God, hear our prayer. Oh God, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. For church leaders, that they seek out and truly listen to the humbly 
devoted people and gain understanding toward meeting expectations of those seeking guidance in their faith. We pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. For those in government, that they practice civil and constructive discourse and pursue truthful leadership, we pray. Oh God, hear our prayer. That messages of hope be shared to help inspire everyone to find ways to participate in reviving and caring for the environment. We pray. Oh God, oh God hear our prayer. For all caregivers and healthcare workers, that they receive thanks and find personal support to continue their good works. We pray. Oh God, oh God hear, hear our prayer. prayer that all those who are discriminated against may find the authentic acceptance and encounters that come from God. We pray. Oh God, oh God hear our prayer. For all who are baptized, that we embrace our anointing and seek to serve others. We pray. Oh, oh God, God, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers and all those burdened with illness, including those listed in the book of prayer and in the parish bulletin, we pray. Oh, oh God, God, hear our prayer. Almighty God, open our hearts to hear your voice and find your guidance in answer to our prayers and in our efforts to live our faith. We pray this through our brother, Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the justice of church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the offerings that we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. <laughs> are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, you may be counted now 
and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. And by our partaking of this mystery, almighty God, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your son and conform us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, with all the other bishops and priests and deacons and your entire people everywhere that your son has gained for you. Grant that all of the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel and keep us attentive to the needs of all, as sharing their grief, sharing their pain, sharing their joy, and sharing their hope, we may faithfully bring to them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all of the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your own face and in the resurrection give to them the fullness of your life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and the martyrs, with St. Charles, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We invite those on Zoom to unmute at this time. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory, glory, are glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not upon our sins. Look instead upon the faith of your church and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. Let's offer one another the sign of peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Peace, Michael. Peace.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our announcement. Be sure to pick up a bulletin on your way out. If you have a donation, please put it in the box in the back of church. We appreciate your financial support. Next Sunday after Mass, Leaf will share a reflection on the Word as part of our Voices of the Community program. Join him in person in the chapel or online on Zoom. The reflection will also be recorded and posted on our website. Next Sunday is also the deadline to register your child for baptism later this month on January 30th. See details in the bulletin. We need help taking down the lights and the trees in the church immediately after mass. Please help us if you can. Thank you. Uh, New Catholic Sentinel is here. Pick it up to read. Thank you, Sandy. Good morning. My name is Leif Kerwald, pastoral coordinator. Uh, a welcome to all of you here. Uh, as, as we all know, these are strange times and COVID circumstances have uh, forced us to curtail uh, for the time being, well, suspend, I should say, our um, Sunday hospitality. So I'm sorry, no donut, no coffee, no juice. Um, Probably not next week, but hopefully as, as numbers get better, we'll, uh, we'll come back together uh, in that way. I want to uh, encourage you, as, as Sandy said, uh, pick up a, a bulletin. And there's a particular piece in the bulletin that I'd like you to mark and, and note. And that's uh, the uh, offering this spring, um, January, February, March, April, a four-part series uh, for adult faith enrichment called Reading the Bible Rebelliously. Uh, Dave Gregory, uh, theology teacher at De La Salle, is going to walk us through some fascinating passages and sections of the Old Testament and take a look at them through the lens of justice, liberation, not just for the people way back then, way back in the day, but for peoples today. What does the Bible tell us about justice, about uh, liberation? So take a look at that. It starts uh, this month, January 25th, reading the Bible rebelliously. It will be available in person in the commons uh, each of those four evenings, but also on Zoom. Uh, so uh, feel free to, to join us either way. Uh, finally, I want to mention particularly for our people on Zoom, uh, you're missing one of your cohorts this morning and I believe it's the first Sunday she has missed since COVID struck. Ginny uh, Wilkinson uh, has, um, taken ill this this week and and has had a, a little bit of time in the hospital and uh, so we're praying for her and um, Ginny we love you and we miss you and and I know you'll you'll see the recording of this so I want to tell you that straight up um, and we're praying for you thanks please stand the Lord be with you with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks. Thank you.
All that we have seen, we will not hide away. We will hold it up to the light of day. A lamp of mercy meant to guide and lead, carry to the least. We will show the world all that we have seen. All that we have heard, we cannot keep within, for the truth is meant to be told again. Singing the promise of the saving word of He who loved us first, we will tell the world all that we have heard. We will go forward to serve the Lord, and we will love as never before. The peace of God has set us free to proclaim to all of the world all that we have seen. All we have received, may we freely share with every tribe and tongue. Lead us everywhere till all are gathered at the feast of love and your kingdom comes. We will show the world all that love has done. We will go forth to serve the Lord, and we will love as never before. The peace of God has set us free to proclaim to all of the world all that we have seen. We will go forth to serve the Lord, and we will love before. The peace of God has set us free to proclaim to all of the world all that we have seen, all that we have heard, all that love has done.